All right, so solving polynomial equations. When we're solving equations, we're looking at this the exact same way as we would when we're solving any type of equation. So a polynomial doesn't change that if we were solving a quadratic, we would factor it and find our zeros. With a polynomial equation, we do the exact same thing. So you must bring a polynomial equation to factored form in order to solve it. You don't necessarily have to bring it to factored form, but that's the easiest way of doing it. When you're solving an equation, the easiest way to solve any equation is to factor it. Now, it's not always easy if you don't know how to factor well, but it should be the easiest way of doing things. So solve by factoring. Okay, now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've already gone through and I know what the factors are. But with this equation, we would be looking at our B value of 3 and then our A value of 4. So we're going to have factors that are on top 3 or 1 and then on the bottom 1, 2 or 4. So the first one I'm going to try is 3 over 1. So we have x equals 3. And again, if you want to go through these questions before I do and try them, that's probably the best way to do things. But I'll try 3. I'll do my synthetic division. We have 4, negative 12, negative 1, and 3. We're going to have a little remainder box. Bring the 4 down. I'll do this in a different color just so you can see that now I'm working through it. So bring the 4 down. We get 12. 12 plus negative 12 is 0. We get 0 there. Negative 1. And then we're left with negative 3. Remainder of 0. So then that's going to tell me that x minus 3 is a factor. All right, so moving up right along then. This is actually nice because down here, we're left with 4x squared minus 1. I'll give you a second to look at that, but you should see that that's easily factorable. And it's going to make our life way easier because now we're going to have 2x plus 1. This is that difference of squares that a lot of you guys were having trouble seeing before. And 2x minus 1. So what this means is that we have solutions of, therefore, x equals 3, x equals negative 1 over 2. That's coming from this right here. And then x equals positive 1 over 2. That's coming from this right here. All right, that's probably the easiest type. Obviously, it was a little bit harder because we had this 4 out front, which gave us an a value. Um, it's a little bit cheating when I do it for you, but it shows you that that's kind of what we're looking at. The next thing, not everything's factorable. We know that from quadratics that we can't factor everything. When you very first learn to solve quadratics, you do it by graphing, then you do it by factoring. Then the last method that we look at is the quadratic formula. So we're going to look back at the quadratic formula. So with that, we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There's our quadratic formula. Again, quadratic formula. It only works with quadratics. So going through this, um, you can't use the quadratic formula yet because we have a degree of 3 here. So what we're going to be looking at, um, again, if you want to try this by yourself, you can first. We've got 1 or 5, plus or minus in both cases. It's going to be our first factor. I'm going to try um, negative 1. Just, like I say I'm going to try it, but I've cheated so I know that it works or it should work. Unless I did math wrong earlier. So we're going to bring the 1 down. We've got 1 times 1 is negative 1. That's 8 negative 8, um, 5, negative 5, and 0. So what I've done did work, which is great. So we'd have, therefore, x equals negative 1 is a solution. Okay? Or you could put x plus 1 is a factor, and then state your solution. Okay? When I look down at the bottom here, now I've got x squared plus 8x 
plus 5. Now, there's no two numbers in the world that are going to multiply to 5 and add to 8. Because the only two numbers that multiply to 5 are 1 and 5, and 1 plus 5 is not 8, it's 6. So, we're going to try the quadratic formula here. We're going to get x equals um, negative 8 plus or minus square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 all over 2 times 1. Then we're going to get negative 8 plus or minus, uh, what's that, 64 minus 20. We've got 44 all over 2. Couple different things you can do with this. You should be ra or you should um, reduce your radicals. So this is going to come down to. Uh, I'll just do the two solutions here. We're going to have x equals negative eight, and this is going to be plus or minus, and I'll write it out: root four root eleven over two. Now root four and root eleven come from the square root of forty-four, and we're reducing that, so we're looking for a perfect square which is root 4. Um, let's just highlight that for you. So we're looking for this perfect square right here. Okay, in the middle there, root 4 is a perfect square. So when I do that, root 4 times root 11 gets me back up to root 44. But that also allows me to reduce my radical. And my page is going real slow here, so there we go. And that gives me negative 8. plus or minus 2 root 11 over 2. Oh, I should be, I should have gotten rid of my plus or minus now, but um, let's actually do that right now. Sorry if you've already written that. So we have negative 8, let's say this is plus um, 2 root 11, and now I'm back to green. Awesome. And then over here, we'll go negative 8 minus 2 root 11. So what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get the twos are going to divide out of each term. So this would become negative 4 plus root 11, or x equals negative 4 minus root 11. Okay, the 2 has to divide out of both terms. I'll show you one of them. I'll show you the one on the right here. Um, if we looked at this, and you're wondering why that 2 is out of both terms, Remember, when we have fractions, this is what we really have here. Okay, we have a common denominator. So the 2 is going to cancel out with the 8, and that one's going to become 4, and the 2 is going to cancel out and become root 11. And it happens in both cases. So then, therefore, we've got, therefore, x equals, what did we have? Negative 1, or x equals minus 4 plus root 11, or x equals minus 4 minus root 11. Okay, you don't have to put that final therefore statement if your answers are nice and clear like I already have them, but it does help summarize what we're looking for. Because it's a cubic, you should have three answers. Okay? What if we don't have a perfect square, or what if we have a negative number? You need to remember that if we have a negative number underneath our square root sign, we get complex roots. Now, some of you in grade 11 would have dealt with that, some of you might not have seen it, but all that's gonna happen is if we have the square root of negative one, all that we're going to do is add an i value. So negative 1, that equals i. Okay? Or is no, i squared. i squared, excuse me. So if I were to, oh, that was i, I was right the first time. Oopsie, sorry about that. Slowing you guys down. So if I had something like, um, I don't know if you guys have one on your sheet or not, but if I had something like, negative root 43, that would become 
root 43 times i. Okay, where i brings the negative 1 out, and we can now do root 43. Or if it was a perfect square, something like negative root 16, that would be equal to root 16, I'll do this, i, which is 4 i. Okay, and now we're in the complex root system. Okay, so if we look at that one, it's going to look something like this. We're going to go through this example. Um, again, try this yourself before you just watch the solution. But we'll work through with negative 3. We've got um, 1, 2, 0, negative 45. Remember, you always have to include your 0. We've got 1, negative 3. That's going to be what? Uh, negative 1. Am I right here? I might be wrong. Negative 1 times that's going to be 3 is 3 is 9, and I'm gone. Nuts. All right, so let's try 3 then. 3 squared is. No, come on, Mr. Shaw. 3 squared, 3 cubed is negative 27. Oh, it's got to be positive 3. That's my issue. Sorry about that. Wasting your time. That's a positive 3. And I'm not going to remake my whole video, so that's why you have to watch me thinking through this. So it's 1. That's going to be 3 is 5 is 15 is 15 is positive 45 is 0. That's going to give me x equals 3 is one solution. And then we'll move down here. We're left with x squared plus 5x plus 15. We're going to go right into the quadratic formula because we know that it is a quadratic formula question because why else would it be in the note? Um, we're going to get 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15 all over 2 times 1, we're going to get negative 5 plus or minus uh, 4 times 15 is 60 minus 25 is root 35 over 2. So we're going to get root 35 can't reduce, so negative 5 plus or minus square root of 35i over 2. And we'll leave it in that case with the plus or minus because that's also fine. Or x equals, what do we have at the start? 3. And we're all done. Sorry about that math that I messed up, but it allows you to see how simple it is to mess up that synthetic division. Um, yeah, and now there's the worksheet for you to work on.